you've been doing this will we won't we debate shit for a while like you wanted to talk about like migrants or what like I, I don't know do you want to come on and talk about this i want to talk about how the steep civilizational decline is being brought about by women with abs i've said this before but i really do think a ton of the success of sargon and other types like him is just the british accent so i think he's really playing into it you know it's a little bit gay isn't it when the men when the men lock the women isn't it <laughs> yeah dude the traditional idea of ideal for masculinity is he man so fucking true carl yes So a little while ago, some YouTuber, I don't know, some fash, I, I don't fucking, I, I don't care. But anyway, they made a video where they said that, I, I think it was like guys' sexual proclivities were degenerate or something. It was, it was something like that, you know? It, you know, it was one of those standards like people are enjoying sexual tastes that are not my own. And for that reason, Western civilization is on the downfall. It's really, really, really standard stuff. Okay, there's the video up. But anyway, anyway, Sargon of Akkad had a comment under that talking about how, like, Western society was dying and people made fun of him for it. So then he made a live stream called, uh, Lick the Abs Bigot. And I haven't watched it. I haven't even seen a clip from it. But I really, 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 really just, I need the, the to, I need the vibes. So let me just bring that right back there. And perfect. Absolutely. All right, Carl. I just... I just want to see what's up. Okay, lip, lick the abs, bigot. Let's go. I think we're live. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We'll leave it a few minutes before we get started. Even though it's past my bedtime. 11 o'clock nearly on Saturday night. What am I doing up? My man. That's the question. It's getting risky. Well, I'm going to be responding to a drama I got roped into, even though I wasn't really involved in it. But uh, we may as well... Explore it a bit, I think, because there's a lot of sensitivity on all sides of this. And who puts the mic gate on that level? Yeah, we're going to hear every single time he licks his lips. He's got one of them ASMR mics where he's got things tuned, the hypersensitivity. That's the I've said this before, but I really do think a ton of the success of Sargon and other types like him is just the British accent. So I think he's really playing into it, you know? I think that both sides are speaking past one another, and like the radical it's centrist that I am, I think I can at least try and bring these two to a, an understanding. Perhaps. I'm fucking excited. Because it involves a bunch of people who I really like on all sides, and I can see sort of bad blood forming in certain ways, because there's a lack the of girls understanding Girls with abs are going to break up the position. skeptic community. And it doesn't have to be that uh, this is the case, and so I'm going to do my part to try and merely explain what I think is happening, and I will try to make it concise. Um, at least I can see that uh, things are working. Let me, sorry, I've got to, got to make sure I don't boom the whole thing, because you know that I don't do my own tech stuff now, for good reason, and uh, for everyone else's uh, benefit. Uh -huh. So, this began a few weeks ago when <laughs> uh, a YouTube. This is very measured language for Sargon. Yeah, it's fun. Like he, like any issue he talks about, he froths like a lunatic. But when he, or his like immigration, feminism, whatever. But now we're talking about the ethics of jerking off to girls with abs, and he's like trying to moderate some kind of burgeoning in community war. You know, he sees like the Coomer fash and the anti Coomer fash lining up on opposite hills ready to fight each other and he's he's running out there you know like or, or he's on horseback and he's like no no stop tuba who i'm friends with i'm friends with all of these people that's yeah, the see? and i like all of their content i watch all of their content on a regular basis so i don't want anyone to feel called out or anything like that because this this is not what i intend to do here so there's a youtuber called academic agent and he made a video because he's he's transitioned somewhat from being oh, a uh, free market capitalist to traditionalist, shall ah, we say. Of course. And of he course. in this traditionalist mold, through this traditionalist lens, is looking at the state of modernity and is not very impressed with what he finds. Mm -hmm. And you can hardly blame him because modern modernity is 
pretty gross and uh, quite unimpressive compared to, well, anything in the past. Y- yes. Which at least had some dignity about it. But- <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. When hangings were public and people were waiting through shit piling in the streets, yeah. It's so obvious that when when Sargon talks about Western civilization, he just imagines that one photo of, like, the two fucking Greek dudes arguing in the Pantheon or whatever. Like, that's all he thinks. Like, he, when he thinks of the past, he thinks of, like, a large romantic painting. And that's it. And there's, there's no other, like, no reality. Just complete head empty. But, uh, anyway. So, it begins with this picture now i don't know how well you can see that uh, but this oh, I can see it perfectly. was in response to someone posting a, a girl a woman posting a picture of their abs on twitter and someone had obviously drawn this and he took exception to this mm-hmm. and that's funny that- okay so to amend my earlier statement you guys asked me who would give the worst head game and my answer to it is whoever gets offended by this drawing Anybody who looks at this drawing and gets offended by it or thinks that Western civilization is being corroded by it would objectively give the worst head imaginable, okay? You could not imagine a toothier, drier experience. It is ap- the, the absolute apex. Um, you will uncome, okay? You, if, if you recently impregnated somebody or fertilized any eggs, a blowjob from anyone of this disposition would actually unfertilize their eggs. This is sort of contextual psychic backlash against all sperm in existence. Uh, uh, that have belonged to you and anything they've ever done. That's very, very That's funny. an abortion, yeah. But his exception wasn't wrong. And so, as you can see, you have some sock puppet thing licking a woman's abs and a bunch of young men on Twitter posting this and uh, cooming over it. Mm-hmm. Sure. And sure. this sent him into something of an apoplectic rage. And this lasted for Nor- days and Normal days behavior, and days, by and the way. It- this went on into weeks, and somehow oh I got dragged into this, and I was like, right, okay, uh, because I watched his video on this, and I was on the toilet, as I watch most YouTube videos these days, and this, uh, in the first couple of minutes, before the video had started, before I knew anything about him in the video, uh, he'd said something like, you know, we're a civilization in steep decline, and so I had posted uh just the thing saying you're underselling the total collapse quite significantly Mm -hmm. because we are in a total collapse of our civilization more women have abs now than ever before to say the funny thing is by the way that don't like the traditionalist nazi larper whatever types don't they usually like play up very fit women because i i swear to god i've seen a ton of stuff like on poll or whatever where they fetishize super fit women because they imagine that like aryan women back in the in the nordic hills or whatever were all like super strong like vikings or what like right i've seen that yeah where, where, where they're like this is like the ultimate aryan female or whatever or some shit i swear to god i've seen stuff like that it probably varies you know the constant dichotomy between saying that aryan women are like the greatest and strongest and best and saying that all women should just be like barefoot and pregnant hey it's not good news it's just happening and we're doing nothing about it uh, if you're okay with the collapse of civilization, then you're probably like, hey, great. This allows me to coom even more, whatever it is. And, uh, and True. I mean, you know, there are so many examples of this. But one of the examples that I've linked in the description is this video uh, talking about women and sugar daddies, which is really sad. Uh, I'll summarize it by just saying, essentially, Generation Z have been taught by the millennials who were totally subverted by the social justice warriors into being purely materialist psychopaths who are unable to form proper emotional and romantic connections is sargon aware of the fact that for basically all of human history marriage has only been something that people do for family power and for wealth like people would literally marry off their daughters for millennia as a transaction we're in the modern era moving away from that you're literally talking about a trend which is less common now in the west than it ever has been for like, I think like basically all of recorded human history. If you have an issue with like the transactional nature of uh, of relationships, then it's a good thing that you know modern progressives are very much in favor of the you know love is love, uh, marry who you love, because uh, that's that's pretty much the opposite of that sentiment, right? And also, they've been 
taught to hate men. Ah, and so they, these, the millions of young women using various apps and stuff, uh, but in, covered in this article by Zoe Strimple, where they, they just hate men and see them as transactional uh, jobs, basically. They view. Right. Hey, what do you guys want to bet that if there was an op-ed written by a guy who says, I hate women because they've been corrupted by feminism, so I only sleep with sex workers, so at least they're honest about the fact that they only care about the, um, they only care about the money? What do you want to bet that he wouldn't give a fuck? He'd be like, feminism has driven men to this position where they quite correctly have to acknowledge that women do not care about anything other than money, so at least... At least this guy's figured it out, hasn't he? He would, he would, he would probably defend the fuck out of that guy, right? Am I wrong or am I wrong? Come on, Carl, you're gonna watch what I'm saying right now. You might literally be watching right now because I know that you're very active uh, in the YouTube space. I, I, you've been doing this will we, won't we debate shit for a while. Like you wanted to talk about like migrants or what? Like I, I don't know. Do you want to come on and talk about this? I want to talk about how the steep civilizational decline is being brought about by women with abs. If we could, can we do that? I, I like we really we do not even have to debate. We do not have to debate about it, okay? I swear to God, it's gonna be such a calm convo. I won't even make you angry. Nobody's going to get angry at anyone, okay? I just, I just want to hear your opinions. Come on. Then he says not debating lefties anymore. Well, look, we're not debating, okay? It'll just be a friendly convo. Everything through the lens of what do I have to do for how much time to get X amount of money out of a man that I hate? And the men are sad and lonely, really sad and lonely, and just want some female company. They just want a woman to listen to them for a bit. And they're like, okay, fine, X amount of, you know, $5,000 or whatever. And so the women are making out like bandits. Uh, this, of course, means that young men in the sort of age bracket that they would have usually dated have got very difficult dating prospects. It's very, very difficult for them not to be incels because the women... And again, many Wait, he's actually doing it right now. I said he would do this, and I said he would do this, and he's doing it right now. He, he's literally, he's already doing it. <laughs> he's, he's, he's already, oh God. Oh man. And again, rough millions of them in America and Britain billions. are apparently using these dating sites. Uh, this, uh, the, the sugar daddy sites. Wait, he's specifically referring to these sugar daddy dating sites. Are there, millions of women using them? I would be very surprised if their clientele was anywhere near that large. That would be, that would be quite extraordinary to me. Uh, I suppose it's possible. I'd be overstating the problem a bit. I'll say this much, you know, I, I, I haven't been a total slouch in the, uh, in the, you know, the marketplace of flirting with cute girls, and I have yet to meet a single person who would only date guys who would be their sugar daddies, you know? That has not yet happened to me. Maybe one of these days, I don't know. I don't think we should call them dating sites, because they're not. Because the intent is, of course, not to form a relationship uh, and become a part of what we would have traditionally considered to be society. The, the goal is merely just to take advantage of an opportunity. And so you're stuck with this generation that just doesn't understand mm -hmm. what it is to have a relationship, what it is. I pointed this out before, but like, I think that right now people are more likely to marry for love than any previous generation in all of like basically recorded Western society. You guys remember dowries? How like fathers would have to literally sell off their daughters? Or like how marriages between the wealthy were political arrangements that had absolutely nothing to do with love? And he's talking about how like millennials have forgotten about love because he heard about a, the concept of sugar daddies. <laughs> It's probably new to him, right? Like, he probably hadn't heard of it before, and now he's hearing of it, and he thinks it's like this bit, it's like rainbow parties. Like, it's this big degenerate trend that he suddenly learned of that he's very concerned about. It is to love someone, and as the women themselves say, uh, as, as interviewed by Zoe, uh -huh. uh, they hate men. They ah. just hate men. They True. openly you profess ever dated this men? hatred of men. True. It's like, right. And so when you realize, that, okay, you've got, on this one, one dating site that does this, there are four million young women using it. It's like, wow, that's a lot. That's a lot of young- Is that four million? Is that four million accounts? There are only like, what, 170 million women in the United States? So what, that would be like 3% of the population include like babies and octogenarians? Yeah, I, I, I think what you probably mean is there are four million accounts? 
I, 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 I guess I just need to see some data. If I talk with Carl about this at any point, I just, I want to learn, okay? I want to learn. Women using it. Then you realize that's just the upper strata. That's just the ones who are attractive enough to do it. There is going to be a lower strata of ones who Callum points out in this video. They're not attractive to do it, but they are the ones at the protests. They are the ones at the women's marches. They still hate men. They still view their relationships with men as purely power interactions. And this is quite concerning, especially is as it? it's not like the birth rates are doing very well as it is. Yeah, it all in comes a back to that, doesn't collapse. it? And you can say, well, why do you care about that? Well, I mean, I, I'd like a pension. I'd like, you know, I'd, I'd like to I'd like to be able to go to an old folk. So this is something Sargon does really well. I think it's one of the reasons why people in his community consider him to be a smart guy against all available evidence. And it's that he's really good at finding a couple disparate, like, pieces of information, like news stories or whatever, and tying it back into the central narrative that his whole channel is about. And, guys, I don't watch Sargon, you know, dedicatedly, but as I understand it, he's been pushing the incel shit pretty hard for a long time, right? Like, that's basically his, kind of his lasting contribution to the discourse. And, you know, you fit, you fit in the birth rate stuff, and he's done the ethno-nationalist stuff as well, so it all kind of bleeds in together. But, like, he's stringing so many things along. Like, I found a site for Sugar sugar Girl, whatever the, the, the counterpart to Sugar Daddies is, which means that millennials don't love as much. But then there are also ugly feminists who aren't on these sites for some reason, but they do hate men because you see, you see them at the protests. And that means our birth rates are lower. It's like, if you actually stop and think about it for a second, there's essentially no connection between these ideas. But um, if you're a really insecure dude, then I guess it's pretty easy to fit all that together. And folks home and have it staffed. Luke host guardians, thank you. Uh, but anyway, so the point is, I was not talking about licking abs because we haven't got <laughs> to this point. But since that has been the position ascribed to me uh let's talk about it because i think there is something more to this <laughs> please so i mean this you know it was it, aa made the video but i got all the memes okay fine fine that's fine and uh so let's talk about um men and women mm. shall we you know uh, this is there's a the traditional photo woman. guys it's the, this the is fucking traditionally painting. a western interpretation of what a traditional female beauty is an attractive woman with her husband and her family why is it that when these guys talk about traditional gender roles, they're talking about the 1950s? What the fuck do you think traditional means? There are people alive today who would have been around for that painting. What the fuck? What you are the fucking cum-brained uh, new male here, okay? Traditional family structures would have been parents, grandparents, and great grandparents all living together in the same barn house, and each generation having 17 children, half of which lived, okay? The traditional family doesn't exist anymore in the developed world because it was a product of economic conditions that are no longer the case here. Yeah, what like tr the tr the traditional Western family is shown here in this 1990s Avril Lavigne. Like I don't know, dude. Like wait, you you could like how early pop culture can you pull on to defer to traditional like Western standards? You know, Avril Lavigne. I just said Avril Lavigne. I'm so sorry. I just thought of like a pop star. I don't know shit about pop music because I'm actually. Because unlike Carl, I actually do venerate the West traditions, okay? The true the, the Western tradition of not having pop music because it didn't exist yet. I don't know. Fuck you guys. It's quite wholesome looking, isn't it? Good luck getting that. You're in trouble. But this isn't, uh, you know, unique. You know, you can look at an African depiction of what a beautiful woman is. Oh, she's feminine, graceful, right. not hyper muscular. Weird, that, what? isn't it? You go all around the world women what? have a particular kind of idealized form it's not this uh, that's not very womanly uh, that's uh, actually very manly all right i got a couple things to say here first of all look at these pictures of women without abs notice how they don't have abs now notice this picture of a woman with abs do you see how she has abs but the other ones don't curious it's just like a reverse of this where it's all like fit women or whatever. And then they're like, uh, and then they, they say like, oh yeah, well, modern women who aren't like ripped. Yeah, that's because of degenerate Western like hedonism. It's, that's actually a product of feminism. Before feminism, women, women were out like foraging or some shit. And that's why I've got these rock hard abs or something. I don't know. Also, by the way, if you think that pair, that set of drawn abs up there is masculine, I have no fucking idea what to talk to you. Like, I have no fucking idea where you're at.
it's not just the tits, the under tit that's drawn at the top. It's the form of the, the torso is distinctly like feminine, like very clearly. Even if you didn't like have the tits there, that I like you could look at that and very easily determine like that is a, you know, that is a, a woman's body uh, and, and she's yoked, which, you know, good for her. That's what Sargon's body looks like. Yeah, is Sargon looks exactly like this. That's why he says. Uh, that's why he says it's uh, a masculine body. He goes. He he sees this and he just shakes his head disapprovingly. Then goes to the bathroom and looks at himself in the mirror and looks at his rock hard six pack abs with his feminine curve and his hourglass shape and his wide hips. Carl, hit me up. What we t traditionally and usually consider to be a man now is because and this is and this has been folded into the term tomboy. Now, this is not what a tomboy is. A tomboy is a traditional woman of some sort, you know, the something fuck that is a traditional looks like a traditional woman. woman that just dresses slightly less feminine than yeah, it's bullshit. most other women. You know, they don't tend to wear makeup, they wear baggy clothes. It's not that they're bulked like they're steroid-using psychos. Uh, anyway, so this, uh, anyway, this whole psycho. thing... psycho. She just has abs, dude. Very interesting to look at because... If there's one thing you can say about the people doing this on Twitter, it's that they're not being manly. Whatever this sock puppet is, it's not an avatar of manliness. Now, you might not care about that, and you might say, well, this is just Twitter. Dude, <laughs> how insecure do you have to be? Guys, honest question. Do you think Carl eats pussy, or do you think that when like his wife asked, he was like, that's not very masculine of me to go down on you, is it? Like, yeah, fellas, is it gay to be attracted to women? He's literally looking at dudes thirsting over chicks, and he's like, oh, it's not very masculine, is it then? It's not, it's a little bit gay, isn't it? When the men, when the men like the women, isn't it? <laughs> it's like, what? Dude. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, I gotta wonder, like, I, I've said it before, but whatever group of people are the worst to have sex with, it's gotta be whatever the fuck group Carl fits in these days, because holy shit, whatever these lads are doing, it's not exactly that. These 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 blokes are acting rather queer, aren't they? Twitter's not real life. Uh, I agree. Twitter isn't real life. Uh, uh, academic agent disagrees. He thinks Twitter is real life, but that's that's his uh, prerogative. But he's not wrong. I hope about I can the talk declining with him about standards this, of masculinity, and it is outside of the Twitter bubble uh, quite sad to see, and mm -hmm. it is concerning that our civilizations are being run by women uh, who oh. view masculinity as a pathology. Wait. Run by women? Wait, how did he... Wait, where are we getting that one from? Just out of curiosity. Run First, run by women. Okay, I'd like some a follow-up on that. Second, who view masculinity as a pathology. Is this like a pro-rape thing? Is this like somebody at some point pointed out that Carl's takes on the age of consent were like bad and he thinks that his traditional masculinity is being impeded on? This is some weird ass shit. I, I just gotta say, man, like, don't you think this traditional narrative could be turned around on its head super easily? Like, don't you think somebody could say that the most masculine men would be fucking like the most muscular women? Because like, it takes a real man to handle a strong woman like that. Like any woman who looked like that in the real world would crush Carl like in half, right? Like they would, they would fold him into a cube and then, like, toss him to a garbage crate. Like, you could say, like, oh, yeah, Carl, the reason why you want, like, skinny wayfish women is because you're physically weak and incapable of handling, like, a, like a strong woman, you know? Like, you know you'd lose. It's essentially, I mean, it's basically the same argument that pedophiles uh, make, right? The kinds of, like, far-right pedophiles who are like, well, traditionally, you know, the wives were 12 years old or whatever, which is not generally true through, like, modern European or, like, even pre-modern European history in a lot of cases. So that excuse doesn't even work. It's very much a post hoc justification, one. And two, uh, really just, it just feels like a self-report in 37 different ways, you know? You can see this over and over in anywhere in academia, practically. Also, being a YouTuber is not traditionally masculine, Carl. Young boys are just Carl. drugged now. Take your ADHD medication because True. you're not sitting still like a young girl does. It's like, well, as Christina Hoff Summers points out, boys are not defective young girls. Uh, they have different personalities they have different like biologies they are something not the same and essentially trying to engineer them into becoming young girls from an early age as well as going stretching on into their adulthood is not girls good are defective for boys, the state actually. of masculinity and this is what aa is thinking of now you can say okay well 
using a Twitter meme to make that point when this is clearly a joke uh, is not good form and it makes you look ridiculous. That's true. That's uh -huh. a fair criticism. But the point is still true. What is he talking about, Vosh? So there's like there's only one way to interpret this, and it's that Carl is deeply insecure in his masculinity. He expressed it publicly, it got mocked for it, and now he's desperately trying to make up for it by politically post hoc justifying his insecurity, but he's not succeeding because he's not that bright. And it's pretty obvious how he feels about this sort of thing. So we're just getting 40 minutes of him explaining how actually his discomfort around strong women is a product of him trying to save Western civilization or something. Which I'm totally here for. I'd watch this if it was three hours long. Let's just give it a go. Even though he chose a really bizarre uh, form in which to address it. Uh, but to be honest with you, if he hadn't chosen this meme-worthy format, I think it unlikely it would have caused the controversy that it did. And I think the fact that it did cause controversy is because it hit on a fundamental truth. Other people are insecure. I think it insecure. is important that this is an, Not this me. Is an, an object of discussion. Especially as I don't think it's as online as you think. Weirdly, uh, this came across my Facebook feed today. Uh, it was it today or yesterday? Uh, cleavage is over. Welcome to the age of killer abs. Oh, fuck yeah. Weird. For women. Why, is, why, why are women trying to get killer abs? Because they want to. It's just bizarre, isn't it? <laughs> He's so dim, dude. He's... I, I feel like his his way of analyzing stuff he doesn't understand is akin to that guy who points at the butterfly and asks if it's a pigeon. You know what I mean? He's just got this blissful inability to perceive anything outside of the incredibly narrow range of biases that he has never changed. Yeah. Oh yeah, Shu, you're right. Isn't he always saying society promotes obesity? When he sees fat chicks, he's like, Oh, well, this is because feminists said fat people aren't, aren't uh, subhuman. And now he's seeing people being like, yeah, I'm going to get fit. And he's like, no, you can't be stronger than me. Holy fuck. Well, like, what happened to free choice or society or whatever? Did he get over? Does he not pretend to believe that anymore? The whole, like, individualism thing? He Did he get over that? He got over that, didn't he? He had to have gotten over that, right? Because, I mean, obviously, in previous eras, that's not really what men were focusing on when they were looking at a woman and thinking, right, who, okay, who she's, cares? Uh, she's a good partner. It was cleavage, obviously, and hips what? and ass and whatnot. But uh, what? cleavage primarily is what women have used. To what? what? Does he think that, like, medieval women was like... Do you, does he think that, like, giant gazongas were, like, the, the archetypical female beauty standard? <laughs> what? What is he? Ah, oh, dude, the history of like what features are considered attractive in women has changed so much with time. But the obsession with like huge tits and hips, like massive like hourglass waists and stuff, is mostly a fairly modern one. Um, like the presence of breasts and hips at all are pubescent traits, so that's always been associated, at least to some extent, with female sexuality. But the modern obsession with having them be like really, really big or with cleavage. Hey guys, medieval dresses didn't show cleavage. They literally didn't. It was the Middle Ages. They weren't showing cleavage. And the women back then were a lot more portly than Sargon would probably like today. He would probably, if he went back to 14th century France to go revisit the origins of Western, like like the fucking, you know, his, his, his ancestors or whatever, I don't know. He'd probably just find a bunch of Rubenesque women and get super triggered or something. He'd say that they were fat and ask them why they aren't taking better care of their bodies, and they would explain to him that they work on the farm for 14 hours a day, and then he would probably, like, trip in a pile of mud and start crying. You know what I mean? Like, he would like he would try to get, like, off the mud bank onto the road, but he would trip and fall and cry, and she would pick him up with her large farm worker hands. And then Carl would, like, coom a little bit, but he'd feel really bad about it. Is this... This can't be best in slot, is it? Dwarf star ring? Why does that sound familiar? Hold on. Not best in slot? No, it's not. Is it is it um is it best in slot for magic find? Best MF gear. Oh no, wait, it doesn't have magic find. It has um sorry, I saw magic damage and I, I thought I saw magic find. Okay, okay. Wait, don't I already have a dwarf star ring then? Sorry, I'm just uh Oh I do, I do, I do. Okay, 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 okay. I, I knew it was familiar, I just didn't know if I'd seen it in the lists of uh the lists of gear that I was looking for. Okay, sorry, let's go.
to beguile men and you can find studies they, they, in fact there's this one video that's really funny where there's this guy he's like right huh. he's filming himself and he's got this software that uses the webcam to track his eye motions on the screen oh my he's God. like right there's a woman's cleavage is going to come up and i'm not going to look at it and you can see him and he's like right so the image comes up and his eyes just straight to it and he's like damn it damn it and he's so that's actually where he gets his data from I saw this video of a guy, and he couldn't resist looking at girls' tits. So anyway, that's how I know that gr girls' tits are the moral center of, of the female beauty. <laughs> so angry with himself. It's, it's such, a, <laughs> such a difficult thing to resist as a man. I really want to not pause every two seconds, but he keeps, he keeps being very funny. Imagine being like 40 years old. And doing the 12 year old boy excuse, you know? Dude, I can't help it. Medieval dresses from a painting from like 1350. I, gu I guess you could get a lit, a lit, maybe this neckline right here, maybe? M maybe? I don't know. I, 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 you know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say I don't think that cleavage was a, was a big, f also, wait, holy shit, is this RuneScape? Dude. Look at their look at their name tags. We have the setting and the aesthetic. Looking for GF. We'll buy GF. That's what they did back then. But you can you can ah oh, that that video cracks me up. But anyway, but the point is why why we'll guy GF apps? for a blue what, party why? at? You know, <laughs> as a man, I don't care about that at all. Like, mm -hmm. going back to our original picture. I don't find that sexy. I mean, that looks like a bloke with tits. Okay. So why would I be into that? But that's you don't the have question, to. isn't it? I was you, lucky you enough to be uh, born before Generation Z men, <laughs> frankly, and millennial men. I was lucky enough to be born in a generation that got to uh, watch uh, X-Men and, Boomer. you know, all these sorts of Saturday morning cartoons that weren't trying to subvert traditional gender roles. Uh, and this, I think, was uh, something I'm looking back very, very pleased with. <laughs> I'm glad I don't have the sort of gender confusion young people have today. I don't think... But what I don't think people are getting gender confusion from looking at girls with abs and wanting to lick the abs. I think they're... I don't... What does that have to do with gender? Do you... I... He, he doesn't... Do you think he knows the difference between gender and sexuality? Like, if I sat him here, do you think he could give... Do you think he could, like, explain the difference? I sincerely doubt... I really don't think that he could. I, I don't... I genuinely don't. And he's talked about it so many hundreds of times. Yeah, Bugs Bunny was, like, cross-dressing and kissing dudes. I'm glad that I grew up as a millennial and not as one of those degenerate silent generation types who would have seen a cartoon animal ha making out with a same-sex human hunter trying to kill it. How what lesson are we teaching our children? I don't know. They probably got mad about that back in the day, right? I guess what my point is, is that uh, Carl fell off plus L plus ratio. What am I talking about? And what are we talking about when we say this is not manly? Like, what does that mean? What is manliness? Why is this Being important? What does it do? You know, and this is where I think it is Adam and Sitch uh, oh, sort no. of come off the rails. And Short Fat Taku as well, who was also involved in this on Twitter. Again, all people I very much uh, enjoy. Oh, they were content. pro Coomer. They were pro Coomer. I've got a great amount of respect for their integrity and their intelligence. And so this was not a, a conflict I saw coming or expected to ever weigh in on. I had a great deal of respect for these blokes. So when they said they like girls, but when the girls had the abbeys, I thought, what? That's not like them at all. So I'll double check them in the DMs. And yep, turns out they think that these blokes with tits are hot. What? It's stupid. It's a fucking stupid. But I think that there is something it... to being a man that is not merely being male. And I think that's not huh. controversial to say. And again, weirdly, like, my timeline seems to be propping, really? popping things up. So this, uh, this article came up literally about an hour and a half before I did this stream. And it was really one of the, the, the last sort of pieces of the puzzle that slotted in. Because I don't know who Tom Ellis is, you know, I don't know who this guy is. But when, when The Guardian had posted it on Facebook, they posted... Carl's um, going to come out as trans Not the day. title, they'd posted this. What's the worst thing anyone's ever said about you? You were a disgrace of a man. It's like, okay, but 
What does that mean? And why is he affected by it? Like, if the, if being a man is merely being born male, uh, uh, and, or being an adult male, then you can't really be a disgrace of a man. It's uh, disgraceful. Uh, like, we're just talking about the purely material aspect of one's body. But of course, what he's talking about here is that there are metaphysical expectations that uh, are the traditional construct of what a man is. And this is why, if we look at this picture, you have deep and well-embedded uh -huh. ideas about the role of the adults in these in this picture and what their respective functions in society are expand uh, expanding outwards from their own household and into their careers and social lives and this is what is being referred to here there are certain ways of behaving that we need to discuss uh -huh. and uh, this is what was talked about on adam and sitch's Oh, sorry, Sitch and Adams. Oh, God, Adam. You I have explicitly talked with this guy about gender roles before, and his views are incomprehensible. He is, he, so he says that sex and gender are the same thing, and that you can, there's, you're a woman if you're a biological woman. And then you're like, okay, so do you think that if a woman can't give birth, she's less of a woman? And he'll say yes. Then he'll be like, you're less of a man if you like girls with abs. So is gender and sex not the same thing? Like, I have no, I have, I have no idea. I feel like we're we're on the we're on the cusp of a correct take here, but he's so stupid that he's never actually going to put all the pieces together, or he's going to avoid it deliberately. You know, he's just incoherent. He's completely incoherent. Yeah, I think it actually goes beyond dishonesty. You know, because I think that might be like the easy explanation, but it could just be just absolute one head behavior. You know, just truly, just truly compact cranium behavior here, just small scold uh, behavior. You know. You're the butler. Uh, <laughs> you are the butler. Look, it's in the name. If you, you should have argued for primacy on the basis of alphabetical order, at the very least. But anyway, this is the, the Dev, uh, Sitch, and Adam covered this mm -hmm. on Acad on their stream. Uh, covered academic agents video, and as you can see, they've got the picture of the um, abs, the, the the abs in question, the guilty abs, and the guilty uh, abs. They've been talking about this and at one point sitch and adam start attacking well what is being a man and when academic agent is presenting his thesis he's leaning on the traditionalist constructs of a one julius is it julius evola uh, now i've never read evola what? or Evola, how it's pronounced um i hear he's very very right wing and uh, he has no doubt very what i suppose they would consider to be regressive views on gender uh which i i'm not endorsing or denying because i've never read his work um but uh one thing they do is attack evola or vola himself for not being manly enough and it's like okay that's interesting okay yeah don't worry guys all of your all of your preconceptions were correct an italian philosopher poet and painter whose worldview featured anti-semitic conspiracy theories in the occult fascist intellectual radical traditionalist anti-egalitarian anti-liberal anti-democratic and anti-popular and the leading philosopher of europe's neo-fascist movement yeah, don't, uh, yeah, don't, don't worry. Uh, everything that you thought this guy would be, you ended up being completely correct. Congratulations. Um, <laughs> all of your preconceptions were immediately, uh, yeah. Justified pure male domination over women as part of a purely patriarchal society. Wait! No, this says it right here. If you believe in pure male dom domination over women as part of a purely patriarchal society, then of course you don't want women with abs, because they'd crush you, right? So it literally is just insecurity. It's weakness. You see a strong woman and you feel insecure because it lessens your ability to enact control over them. That's pretty weak. Pretty feminine, my dude. Views on you. The third... Hmm. Finding Italian fascism too compromising, Evola began to seek recognition in Nazi Germany. I guess it wasn't enough for him? Um... Let's see. Let's see. He had reservations about Adolf Hitler because of Hitler's reliance on Volkish nationalism. So I guess he just had a minor, minor semantic critique. Um, oh, good news. During one such raid, 1945, a shell fragment damaged the man's spinal cord and he became paralyzed from the waist down, remaining so for the rest of his life. Nice. See? Look at that. Sometimes, uh, sometimes you do get a... Uh, yeah, sometimes you do get like little... Little, little bits of happiness in there. He didn't die until 1974. Good. He got to live with it for 30 years. 
because perfect height to that's lick a abs. way of essentially ah! just ad homming the problem out of the debate, right? It doesn't matter how manly or not Evola is. What matters is was he saying something that was true? You know, the, the you only thing it doesn't that matters matter is whether, whether or not he, was a he himself doesn't live up to it. Beta. The criticism might well still be true. Beta. And so we have to kind of talk about what it is to be manly. And as you could see there, in fact, uh, you, you can see why, frankly, I do think they are misrepresenting what academic agents' position is here. Because they don't consider themselves to be right wing, uh, and they're not in comparison to, say, uh, like a regular person. But of course, by social justice standards, they're far right lunatics. Uh, but so they're, they're trying to maintain. Well, considering that the guy you're talking about worked with the Nazi party, it seems. I think they would be considered far-right lunatics by most people's standards, not by SJW standards. How, uh, how, how long do you think before we get the Sargon like, oh, well, of course, if you look at the Nazis from the feminist view, they look rather bad, but, you know. Yeah, the dude thought Mussolini was too liberal. The guy looked at Mussolini and he was like, we can amp it up a little bit. We can do better. Do better, Mussolini. I think he's referring to Adam and Sitch, not, uh, not Evola. Oh, he was referring to Adam and Sitch there? They're still pretty far right, but okay, gotcha. Tain a sort of center ground, which is perfectly fine. But Academic Agent says, In short, Adam addresses the fundamental issue, namely young men behaving like teenage girls in front of masculine women. The issue is never about abs. Hold Adam to honesty. And he is right when he says that. Again, going back to the, uh, the image, it's not about the fact that the, the woman has abs. It's about the response of the man to them. Being and so we have to talk about what it is to be a man, as in not just being an adult human male, He's assuming you so hold that retrograde definition dude. of what a man is, but the metaphysical construct of manliness. Now, this traditionally in the Western canon, and we can look back for literally thousands of years to see the demonstration of what is valued in a man Who and cares? what we consider to be manly. Uh, this has been summarized in about six or seven different virtues. Okay, I can't help it. Guys, you said he was an Adam and Sitch's chat. Hold on. I can't. <laughs> I want to talk with this man. I want to hear from his amazing mind. Oh, they're talking about me right now. Oh, God, they're going over the Irrelevant stream? That stream on a stream is going to be like 46 hours long. Wait, I don't need to talk in his chat. I have Sargon's Discord. Hold on. BDS, they keep doing videos about you, Vash. Oh, they're obsessed with me, yeah. They're obsessed with me, but they never actually want to talk. Um, hold on. Is it far enough back? Hold on. Hey. Hey there. Wise ancient. No. Not too mean. Hey there, my dude. Do you wanna hop on and talk about your cooler vid? It slaps. There. We're bringing in an honey better than honey better than vinegar or whatever else. So the first one is courage. A man should be courageous. And this is to be brave. Calm to a be, beta. We'll get to it. Uh, we'll get to have it. the courage of one's convictions. This is to stand by one's word and to stand firm in the face of danger, often physical. Isn't it funny how the fallout, uh, the fallout to this is conservatives voicing hypocrisy accusations to the left? Yeah, isn't it interesting how all the conservatives are desperate to defend the idea that rather than actually address the complaints of socialists, they can just accuse them of being hypocrites for not meeting some arbitrary standard of social participation, then dip without having to ever do anything more? Isn't that, isn't that interesting how that particular line of argumentation does absolutely nothing to further our material interests and does and only gives ammunition to the right and doesn't even like improve anything or make anything better at all and it's just objectively worthless from every imaginable angle? That's kind of crazy, huh? Danger. This was expected that you would go into battle in previous eras. Of course, now... What? I don't see much courage around anywhere. How many people in the chat? You know, ask yourself honestly... Are you going to fight China for your right to coom? What? <laughs> like, ask yourself that. What the what are fuck are you talking about? For? You know, what courage are you prepared to? First show of all, me? yes, and second you know? of all, what? I, I'm thinking about this as well. Like, I, I don't think I'd want to go to war with China. That's on you, uh, pussy. China at some point, and 
you know, I'm not I'm not saying that that it's right or wrong. I'm just saying I think it is something that it has been bred out of us, right? Our what courage the fuck is are definitely you talking lacking, about. I think. Anyway, the next manly virtue is industry, as in being enterprising, being diligent, working hard, and this is a form of self-sacrifice. It is it is something that a man does for others. He doesn't just do this for himself. Of course, my internet is now playing up. Of course, it is. I apologise if my internet cuts out. It shouldn't do. I'm on a land connection, you know, so it should be fine. But uh, anyway, land. So Does he mean Ethernet connection? Ah, oh, shit. So this uh, like this kind of line. self-sacrifice again is bound up with courage when you apply it to certain situations. Uh, for example, dying heroically in battle. So the next manly virtue is personal discipline. Uh -huh. That is self-control, a denial of the passions, okay. resistance to vices, protection of one's own nobility, what? your resolve, what? how controlled you are around yourself. This is a manly virtue. This is not a virtue we ascribe to children. It is not a virtue we tend to really ascribe to women either. Wait, but it is something and that we are like admire the main as a manly virtue. Wait, I'm sorry. Wasn't he just saying, literally just saying, that boys and uh, boys and girls aren't the same, and like guys don't have ADHD just because they're zooming off the walls? Women are taught dis like discipline and self control far more than men historically are. Women had to be like silent, like uh, decorative objects socially, and men could be more racuous because their honor wasn't tied to their ability to shut the fuck up and sit still in a dress in the same way. What the fuck are we talking about, dude? It's so dumb. This is so many lightning immune enemies. Holy shit. Holy shit! And that's bound up with personal responsibility, as in not making excuses for one's own failures, and that allows you to take proper credit for one's own successes. Again, another manly virtue. Mm -hmm. The next one being self-reliance. This is Jordan Peterson's Be the Rock Upon Which Other People Lean. Mm -hmm. It's not surprising that Peterson resonates with men who have never been talk talked to about duty, about nobility, about duty. manliness, not being dependent on someone else. Again, not a womanly virtue. That's fine. Women that have old? other virtues that we can talk about another time, but that's not what this stream is about. And uh, honor is the final one, which is maintaining one's self-worth, one's sense of self-worth, sort of your own pride, treating yourself, as Peterson would say, as someone you are supposed to take care of. This is uh, like a, a relational virtue as well. It describes your dealings with other people. So you are not a liar. You are not a cheat. Low women never learn self-worth. Anytime you hear one of these big like lists, uh, like let's be real. Anytime you hear one of these big like lengthy lists on what it means to be a man being delivered for some like aging out of touch old fucking YouTuber whose income relies entirely upon like systems of revenue that would not have existed, not let alone in modern in antiquity, but like 10 years ago. Like what these really are is like masturbation fantasies. Well, they, they're not writing what they think men should be. They're writing what they think they are and they hate themselves for not living up to it. Behind every historical figure who wrote a great treatise of what men ought to be was self-loathing. And I say that ubiquitously, okay? That is absolutely the case. Every fucking time these are fail sons, you can go, you can do, if you want to talk about Nietzsche, you want to talk about Schopenhauer, you can go back all you fucking want. You will find that all these dudes were fucking miserable and they thought that if they could do the things that they were ascribing to the ideal virtues of men, uh, then they wouldn't be as sad as they are. But it didn't work because as it turns out, uh, you know, dramatically proclaiming that men ought to be X uh, doesn't actually do or mean or fix anything. It just makes you look kind of sad. Do we have any history bows in chat who want to disagree with me on that? I think that's a pretty goddamn good summary of this of this particular pattern of behavior. Nietzsche isn't to be interpreted in a fascist way. I'm not saying that he was. Nietzsche was based, though. Okay. Dude was a huge incel. Do you disagree with that? I'm not saying he was a fascist, because he wasn't. He was a huge incel. No, he was gay. Well, he took it out on women, okay? Please stop saying Nietzsche. 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 Fuck you. Wasn't he kind of Nazi-ish? No, he wasn't. He was opposed to the, um, the shit Nazi said. It was his, what was it, his sister? His sister after Nietzsche's death basically like reframed his work and published it. And she was like a Nazi. So she reframed it and published it in a way that was meant to sort of 
suit the ideological goals of the um of the of the like burgeoning fascist movement in Europe, I think. He stopped listening to Wagner after listening uh, finding out he was an anti-Semite publicly condemned it too. Yeah, no, Nietzsche was a was a pretty cool dude in a lot of ways. Nietzsche! You think well of yourself. You have not debauched yourself. And so you exist in a kind of continuum from a point at which you hopefully reach manhood and you have not been debauched in some way going forward in your own decision making so you are you are brave you're industrious you are disciplined you're responsible mm -hmm. you are self-reliant and if you contain all of these virtues to some degree obviously not the most He's literally degree, saying the, word the, salad. the more yes, you are correct. these things the more manly you can consider yourself to be this sort of metaphysical construct forms a continuum through time and at each point slice in time each moment in time if you are doing the things that are proper to being a man then you can have self-respect as a Why? man and that is something that other people should be able to see because virtues are self-evident and this is what is encapsulated Wait. virtues are self-evident if that was the case why the fuck have we been fighting this whole time virtue you mean like the, the, the ethics of behavior? If that's self-evident, then why- <laughs> Damn, there's a lot of human conflict you could have solved by sharing that one with us early. Self-evident, huh? Okay, sure. God, if only you could go back in time and let everyone know. Dude, it's like, whatever you think it is. What happens when they disagree? If it's self-evident, doesn't that mean that, by definition, everyone should agree? In Rudyard Kipling's poem, If. Poem. Now, I don't know whether you're familiar with if, and if you're not, you are if missing out. If is a rune out, in Diablo 2. But these are all of the virtues that he's he speaking to. I'll let to. you know if he answers. He's not going to answer me. You know what's going to happen? He's going to do the same thing as last time, okay? He's going to answer me four minutes after I end stream in like seven hours. And he's going to say, all right, now you said you wanted to talk. Come on, let's go on. Adam and Sid stream. You're not streaming. Let's go. Hip, hip. And I'm going to say, I want to shit and eat food. And he's going to say, so you're dodging, are you? So you're dodging, are you? So you're dodging, are you? And that's going to be that's going to be the conversation, okay? I shouldn't have that because now he's only going to respond the nanosecond after I finish streaming. Dude, this is what happened last time. He um Yeah, right here. Hold on. May 16th, 2021. I said, hey, pull me in bestie winky face, because he was in a Adam and Sitch stream. And then uh on, like three minutes after I ended stream, he gave me the link to the uh the cloud meeting. And I said, I just finished streaming, goddammit. And Sargon said, so what? We're live on Sitch's channel. Come on in here. And I said, I got to do work for live stream tomorrow. Invite me next time. It'll be fun. Because the next day was the 24-hour PCRF stream. And then Sargon said, so you're dodding. I mean, dodging. And I said, sure, Carl. That's, that's literally the last interaction we had. Yeah. Fake ending stream Sam Cedar style. Nah, I want, I want to be with you guys. I like you guys. Do you know that? If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you but make allowance for their doubting too, you can see how this is a combination of the manly virtues. It's self-discipline, it is self-reliance, it is courage, it is all of uh, these things. And of course he goes through the, the poem, it's not a long one, but at the point he says, you know, yours the is the table. earth and everything that's in it, and what's more, you'll be a man, my son. It's an excellent excellent poem and this is what he's talking about these virtues combined in a person maintained over a period of time this is hey, what I it is to be a man out of curiosity isn't it good for like women to be those things too <laughs> i was just wondering you know because uh it oh fuck my mercenary just died it seems like everything that he just listed is also good to be if you're a woman like like basically equally good to be like, hasn't Carl talked about virtue and honor in women before? I think he also wants those traits to be in women. What does this have to do with abs? What, is, what does any of this have to do... This whole screed and none of these precepts of masculinity have anything to do with not wanting to lick the sweat off a hot girl's abs. Now, this is not scientific or material. <laughs> This is, yeah. as I said, a metaphysical construct. This is something that we project out into the world through our own sense of what it is to be a human being. That's not what metaphysics are. Okay. And this, I think, is what is being lost in the modern world. This understanding that actually there is something, a state of affairs that one can construct that is better and 
again, I can't think of a better word than noble, more noble than being the opposite. So what? this dovetails nicely with a recent stream Academic Agent did uh, on a book by Benjamin R. Barber called Jihad versus McWorld, um, or something like that. And this is a very interesting concept because the, the concept of jihad is not the Islamic jihad. No, nope. uh, it, yes, it is. We're uh, endorsing jihad. If, if we're talking about like uh, Islamic extremists who want to make the entire earth Muslim, uh, that's very much Inshallah. not what the, the point is. The point is that the, the, the phrase jihad here represents metaphysics. Fucking it represents an a priori way of viewing how the world should be. And that is... I'm gonna fucking Roblox myself if he keeps confusing metaphysics with metaethics. I can't do it, dude. Metaphysics and metaethics aren't the same fucking thing. A priori assumptions about ethics are how everyone arrives at baseline ethical conclusions unless you're some kind of lunatic Sam fucking Harris type. Okay? Jesus Christ. Stop mixing them up. Meta ethics. Meta ethics. This is ethics, not physics. It's ethics. Ethics. It's about e Please! I can't keep doing it. Carl, you're like 40. You've been talking about this for so much longer than me, okay? I've been streaming for two and a half years. You're 15 years older than me. At least, right? I, I don't know. Oh, God. Oh, God. I thought when ContraPoints referenced being a woman metaphysically, she was joking, but I guess some people do it unironically. Metaphysics and metaethics aren't the same thing. They're pretty much contained in the name. What is something that is meta of something else, right? When something is meta of something else, it means that it's outside of but refers to. Like, if you're talking about the meta of a thing, like, if, like, what's the meta in, like, a video game, you're not talking about the stats within the game, but rather the play styles that people tend to adopt within that game to play optimally. What's popular at the moment? It's knowledge that is outside of the game but pertains to it. Meta ethics is uh, the study of or the understanding of or whatever the fuck of ethical concepts outside their constraints in real world in, 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 the, in the real world. So there's a difference between like like normative ethics where you're talking about shit that actually like refers to real world application of, of, of philosophy and ethical consideration and meta ethics, which is like almost definitively non-empirical and relies on like a here. You know what? <laughs> Honestly, hold on. Before I make a mistake, because these are concepts that are way the fuck above my pay grade. Metaethics is the study of moral thought and moral language. Like, moral truth is a concept, you know? Like, outside of outside of the, like, individual application of these things. Metaethics is what he's talking about. Metaphysics. Are you saying metaphysics isn't a philosophical thing? If you want to say that what he's referring to is metaphysics when he's talking about the ethics of what, like, a man ought to be... Um, I, like, I think, I think that's a massive stretch of the term. If you want to, at that point, you could say, like, basically everything is metaphysics, right? Yeah, it's, it, we're, we're usually talking about, like, concepts like identity, time, and space. Like, what, like, ship of Theseus shit, you know what I mean? I, I guess you could say it pertains here? Uh, I guess, uh, chat, would you agree with me that metaethics is a way more applicable, oh, like, a far more applicable term to use in this condition than, than metaphysics? No, you don't think so? Okay. You know what? Honest, I'll give I'll give Carl the W here. I still think he doesn't know what he's talking about, but you know what? If 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 you guys believe that metaphysics would it's, it's like it's appropriate to fit within this, no, they're both wrong. Well, I guess that's also an option. Philosophy grad right here, metaethics makes a lot more sense. Okay, thank you. All right. Well, you know what? He's got a meta brain, okay? He's got meta thoughts, all right? Because they're they refer to the world, but they are utterly outside any earthly consideration contrasted with muck world which may as well just be called materialism because this is the the free market capitalism the and the extreme end of communism where everyone is allowed everything at all times and there is no restriction to anything and nor should there be a restriction the what? idea of restrictions is well weird quaint old-fashioned metaphysical doesn't apply and you can what? see how the the, the term idea jihad, of if you replace that with metaphysics, is this is what allows them. Okay, never mind. I take it back. He genuinely has no fucking idea what these terms mean. Hey, there's there's no, no, absolutely no way. <laughs> Say well, the American patriots are just as bad Fuck as the me, Taliban. It's like yeah. why? It's like then of course they're not. That's a ridiculous statement. But what they're saying is they view the world in a metaphysical way. They have a sort of in the in the Christian patriot 
view. They have a divine plan, uh, but the and so do the jihadis. But uh, on a on a sort of functional, practical level, they're obviously not the same. But they they occupy the same category, where they both have a view of the world that is not just oh you know how much money do I make? How many? What does view the world in a metaphysical way mean? Whatever Carl thinks it means, it's not what it means. Okay, that's all I really have to say drugs do I take? You know, what video games am I playing? They are not Kumas. They view being Kumas as a bad thing. Being attracted and to women? So this is what I'm talking about. Oh no. The traditional ideal from the Western perspective of Yeah, dude. The traditional idea of ideal for masculinity is he man. So fucking true, Carl. Yes. If you go look at how if you go look at how medieval portrait artists were were painting men, they looked they looked like Arnold Schwarzenegger. That is so fucking true. You're on uh, guys, we oh, I made a joke earlier, but he was being serious. Now he's talking about traditional masculinity in reference to 1980s cartoons. Earlier it was the 50s. The traditional Western stuff, and now we're back to, to fucking He-Man, you know? Eventually, this guy is going to be. Who was the muscular character in Dexter's Laboratory? Who was who was that guy? It was like the secret agent or whatever. I, I, does anyone know what I'm talking about? Does anyone know what his name was? Action Hank. Action Hank. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's going to. Uh, he's going to show like. Um, if you take a look here at a traditional depiction of a Western male or something, just show Dr Dwayne the Rock Johnson, dude. Show fucking um, Maui. Throw it up there, man. Why not? Fuck it up. Just show literally any, like, dude with muscle. Of Hulk Hogan. Now, I'm using He-Man as an example of that because he is a great example of how Muck World can package the metaphysical and sell it back to you. What? And uh, and I, I, I will, at some point, chastise Academic Agent for daring to mock He-Man as well. But this is the uh, the ideal of masculinity we got to watch on, you know, 80s Saturday morning cartoons. And... That that screenshot is from a cartoon that released this year. Th that that frame of animation that you're looking at right now was released this year. That's from the 2021 remake. Does he think he's looking at the 1980s cartoon? Does he know? Does he have any idea? He knows that? Okay. Thank God we did, because at the very least, we got to see what an example of all of the masculine virtues put together looked like. A big... It's not something young people get to actually see these days. What the fuck? You know, they don't get to see that that is something noble and desirable. But at least what? we used what? to. I anyway, want to talk to him on, so bad. This seems unconnected, but it's completely connected. Uh, here we have the Conservative Party in Britain. Uh, one member of it called Steve Baker, an MP, and uh, he's complaining that the Socialist Party of Britain has gone... Uh, the, sorry, the Conservative Party of Britain has gone socialist. But then I did repeat myself, because they are. Ah, okay. But the problem that Steve Baker has, look at the books that he's posting. He's decided finally, before he, you know, tops himself, because they've gone... The Conservatives, Boris, has become fully socialist at this point. Oh, let's, let's raise taxes. We'll spend, spend, spend. This is fine. We'll do what Jeremy Corbyn would do if he was in government. And so Steve Baker is sat there just just crying into his Hayek. Wait, Counterpoint said Voshites were hacking the stream of Adam and Sitch. What? Counterpoint's the uh, the streamer? What uh, What is his relation to any of this? Are there memes? Am I missing memes right now? I can always rely on the skeptic community for really good memes because there is like this perpetual fucking IQ dampening field in effect over there that I can rely on to provide really, really good content at all times. Didn't Sargon say he doesn't debate lefties anymore? Yeah, well, that's why I don't want to debate, okay? I want to have a conversation. O'Connor is on their stream, lol? Oh, I see. Wait, what, so what So what about Voshites attacking their stream? What's the, what's the relationship between these variables? Help me out here, I'm slow. And Popper, and Nozick, and Mises, and uh, Humor. I've not read Humor, but I've read the rest of them. And the problem that he has with all of this More is like that pieces. these are all materialist texts. And so they can do nothing but present freedom. And freedom is a materialist concept. 
Okay, I'm glad he's fully moved away from the idea there. You guys do remember how Sargon, for literal years, would only talk about freedom of speech, freedom, free expression, individualism, and all that stuff. And now he has moved over exclusively to actually all those things are degenerate, liberal, uh, socialist, etc., etc. We need to move past it in order to save white people. Freedom is essentially, in the end, usurped by the communists because the communists promise more freedom than they promise True. and the communists promise the total freedom of being the kuma true and at the end of the day the sort of libertarian perspective does get checkmated it gets trumped by the communists true and so the libertarians wait he's literally admitting that the, the, the strategy of pretending to be pro-freedom doesn't work because socialists will always beat you with your own game. He's literally just admitting it. Have been totally blown the fuck out on every point, unfortunately. Now, this is not an attack on libertarianism or anything like that. I have many uh, libertarian sympathies myself. I yeah. want a minimal state. I want it kept as far away from me as possible, etc., etc. But the point is that Steve is unable to challenge the problems that we have because he is unable to really see the problems that we have. The problems that we have aren't really about liberties because we have the complete liberty to be a total slave to our passions. That's not... Unless you're poor. That's the issue, right? If you're wealthy, you can do whatever the hell you want. Pursue whatever interests you have in your life. Music, art, fucking hot people, I don't know. Whatever makes you happy. But if you're poor, you don't. That's why that's the big freedom. It's not just about what you're denied the ability to do. It's what you, uh, it's whether or not you actually have the ability to act on your will. The problem, the problem, and you know, this is everywhere. Like the poorest people on earth have iPhones, Steve, right? Okay. <laughs> like, you know, and okay, they work being three taxed jobs more to pay than we rent. want to be taxed, but we still have everything that we want. Arguments from liberty are hollow these days. That's the problem. And it's not that there I aren't do. loads of liberties that we're losing. Look at the the COVID tyranny that is being imposed. <laughs> I can't travel. I can't leave this country at this point because I'm, I'm not vaccinated. Oh, and no. And I, it's not that I think there's anything wrong with the vaccines either. Like, millions of people have been vaccinated. If people are dying in the streets, you know, I'd be like, okay, maybe there's a problem, folks. But, okay, they're, they're, don't worry. There well, are they're people dying who in the hospitals. had negative side effects. But these are... A, a, a tiny, tiny minority. The reason I don't get vaccinated is because the attitude. I, I just don't like the attitude. I've had COVID, <laughs> but I don't need to get a vaccine to protect me from a disease I've had and recovered from because if the point of a vaccine is to give you antibodies for a disease that you might catch, well, too late. Hey, does anyone here remember how not like 10 minutes ago he was talking about how a man works honorably, not just for himself, but for others? And now he's like, I don't need to get the vaccine. Because I don't want to. I already got sick. I don't understand anything about virology and the ways in which the propagation of diseases rely on people's unvaccinated status. He's like literally like not five minutes ago. He was talking about sacrificing yourself for social good. And now it's uh, now we're now we're now we're back to this one. For me, isn't it? You know, there's no point. And it's the attitude towards the vaccines, the tyrannical, Very feminine of you, Carl. authoritarian attitude. And so I'm not saying there aren't arguments but steve isn't making them and they're not arguments on the sort of personal and social level and apparently they just don't resonate with our governments anyway why is steve failing here well he's failing because he's not speaking to the metaphysical essence of what we think of real people <laughs> we're flattening everything down into a question of civil rights but that's not the question you know the civil right to be a sugar baby is that good like, is that what civil rights were for? Sure, no, if you wanna. Because I've been reading uh, the Federalist Papers recently, actually, and I think, why? Why was I reading that? It's like, yeah, I know. Just because I never have, actually, right? It's just, I never have. But, um, He's never read anything, so that's not surprising. But the problem is that you can tell it's a very different society that uh, Jefferson, Madison, I think it is, that are writing for, uh, and it's not one that has coomerism like we have now it's dude, not that's, one that's dude that that's has... that's crazy a formal political document from 250 years ago doesn't have any direct references to like tumblr porn memes that's that's incredible what 
Damn, dude. Hey, guys, I was reading the Magna Carta, and from my research, I can determine with absolute confidence that there was no such thing as, uh, as, 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 as femboys back then? <laughs> what point are we trying to make? Oh my god, he's so fucking funny. If this, if he, if he had self-awareness, this could be a bit, you know? Marx is invalid because he doesn't talk about OnlyFans. Yeah, Karl always says that communism leads to Kumerism or whatever, right? But Karl Marx never talked about Kumerism, so I guess not, right? Unironically funny or ironically funny? Well, I feel like if he, I feel like he just behaves in in like a like he's an exemplar of perfect self mockery, you know? Where you could have a person do this bit and it would be like a perfect mockery of Sargon or of the type of people. Sargon is like unfettered capitalism like we have now they're enterprising obviously and they want free enterprise but it's it's a whole different world and they were also deeply religious people and this meant that yeah. they had a morally informed worldview that had metaphysical boundaries remember when Carl you was didn't atheist become a heroin addict or a kuma or you know a sugar baby or whatever because there was something moral holding you didn't become a heroin addict, a coomer, or a sugar baby. Well, if by sugar baby you mean uh, people engaging in sex work, then I gotta tell you, sex work was pretty fucking common back then. I think that sex work has been really fucking common basically forever. I think that it's always been a really frequent thing that you see, especially if you're in the military for a lot of complicated reasons, okay? Like, I don't, like, back then too? Uh, maybe maybe not during the colonist days because we literally didn't even have cities over here. But after we built those cities, yeah, I'm pretty sure that was around too. And if you meet, if by like, what, what was the what was the other fucking criteria that he listed there? What was the other one? Back, like a baby or whatever, a heroin addict or heroin addict. We've got good news, my dudes. Uh, close your history textbooks, okay? They had no problems with opium back in the 18th century. Congratulations, folks. We did it. We did it. No issues with opium known at, at, at all back then. I don't know why I bother responding to him, because he just says stuff, you know? I feel like I might as well try to debunk, like, a random number generator or something. Like, it comes up with a number between 1 and 10,000, and every time it comes up with one, I'm trying to explain why that's dumb. And, I, I don't know, I don't know, I'm being, it's, it's, it's kind of hard, you know? Yeah, it's like trying to debunk spirit science, you know? It's a master of debate. Or a kuma or, you know, a sugar- Sherlock Holmes was addicted to all kinds of drugs? Yeah, the drug use was pretty fucking common back then. Hold on. <sighs> Opium use revolutionary war. Well, back then they used opium to treat sick and wounded soldiers. So... Yeah. Apparently during the Civil War, the Union Army alone issued nearly 10 million opium pills to its soldiers, plus 2.8 million ounces of opium powders and tinctures. Damn. That's a lot. That, that, is, a, that is a significant amount. Sex shops in colonial America. Sex workers multiplied dramatically by the mid-1700s. There were plenty of brothels. Yeah, look at this. Sex workers multiplied dramatically by the mid-1700s. American cities began to grow along with maritime trade that brought increasing numbers of sailors and brothels open to suit them. When George Washington was a young man, brothels could be found in port cities like New York, Philadelphia, Charleston, SC, and Newport, RI. In 1753, Bostonia and Hannah Daly pled guilty to permitting men to resort in her husband's house to carnally lie with whores. Daly was sentenced to stand on a stool at least five feet in height outside the courthouse holding a sign describing her offense. Okay. Prostitution was ubiquitous in Philadelphia's Hell Town, the prototype for the red light districts that would spread across America in the next century. Benjamin Franklin himself admitted to hiring his share of strumpets, as he called him. Hmm. Curious. It's almost like people like Carl have existed for all of human history, and he's just one of the few people stupid enough to continue believing there's something uniquely degenerate about the modern era, in spite of having access to all of historical knowledge at his fingertips. Like... I can forgive people from the 13th century for thinking their generation was uniquely sinful or whatever, because they didn't have the internet. Now we have the internet. 
These excuses do not exist anymore. Now you can at you all this information is accessible with a single Google search. It will take you absolutely no information <laughs> or no time whatsoever to access this information. Um but he doesn't. He is steadfast in his ignorance. A baby or whatever, because there was something moral holding you back. And that morality is not found in the books that Steve Baker is presenting. Okay. It has to be assumed or lent back on in some other way. And without it, again, the communists can just open the door and say, well, we'll just go for it. Why not? And you're like, well, I mean, <laughs> the libertarians aren't telling me why I shouldn't do that. This is also something that is missed by left-wingers, obviously, uh, and I thought I'd bring this up because I watched uh, Philosophy Tube's analysis of Islamophobia. Oh, that's and nice. And again, all you can see is just rampant, dripping materialism all the way through this because it's as if Philosophy Tube doesn't understand... From a Marxist? ...that Crazy. the terrorists don't do this because of as they say food shortages job shortages energy shortages it's because they they're feel magically disenfranchised evil. on a material level it's because they're british or american evil. society uh. they're not going well if only i'd been given a little bit more money from the state then i wouldn't have gone Allahu akbar and blown myself up in manchester arena no not giving them more money but maybe like having them treated better and better integrated in society in the west and giving them better material conditions in 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 their countries by not like bombing them and sanctioning them and shit that'd be like cool i think i don't know i don't know why the fuck i made the decision to walk in this room when there's only one exit killing you know dozens of women and children but well, that's not what they're thinking right they're thinking this is a degenerate society why do they this think is that? a society that permits immorality and revels in it that's what they're thinking the problem See, is, he is pro -jihad. Thinking, this is not an islamic society and you can and she does make the claim that racism drives them to a small number of them to terrorism true not in any way the case true in any way but of course she'd have a very expanded definition of racism and she said well that what we're saying is you haven't uh, accommodated their beliefs enough or something like that because we have our own beliefs here as i yes we do and there's no particular reason we should give them up for muslim immigrants either uh and if but the funny thing is is that actually carl is the one talking about giving up western beliefs the things that he's arguing against in this conversation are um are the values of the enlightenment he's arguing against egalitarianism um, materialism, equality, uh, and fraternity. He's actually the one saying that the West should abandon its um, its values in favor of values closer to the things that those so-called jihadists believe. You know, he's literally anti-Western. Materialism is a largely, at least in its modern incarnation, a Western philosophy. It's an Enlightenment era philosophy. It's a Marxist philosophy. It's just what we tend to believe these days. Carl's claim to be an atheist, right? I don't know why he would have an issue with that. Unless, as with many other, like, alt-right adjacent types, he's sort of like, you know, he's like, well, I'm not religious. What's what's the term? I'm not religious, but Jesus Christ is the God that I don't believe in. Does, does that make sense? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm not religious, but, you know, if there was a religion, it would be, uh, you know, Christ God, the Lord, uh, Jesus Christ, may he save us. Yeah, culturally Christian, you might say, yeah. If they don't like that, well, then they should find a country they're more suited to. If they're going to immigrate somewhere, don't immigrate to ours. But again, the immigration is done on mercenary grounds. We're here because, oh, we want to prosper. We want to make money. No, we're not going to integrate. We're not coming here to integrate. They do integrate. Because, though. again, integration implies a metaphysical construct of what it is to be English or what? Scottish or Welsh. And that's... No. There's nothing metaphysical about the concept of integrating with the values of your society. All you have to defer to are the physical, material uh, uh, values of the country that you live in, not the metaphysical values. Carl, your understanding of what it means metaphysically to be English is probably not shared by a majority of your countrymen, which is why you went with the UKIP party, which got a disastrously low voter turnout. You're clearly not representing the majority here, you know? Like, every time I interact with a British person IRL and they learn what I do and they see what I do, one of the first things they did was apologize, like, to me for you, you know? Along with the other cavalcade of dipshits online who made a living because your voices are slightly more attractive than American accents to Americans. So it's clearly, like, it's clearly not the issue, like, at hand here, you know? We're not defining the metaphysics. It's just, like, you can just defer to their values.
that's not what we've got. You know, we've got little Pakistans, little Bangladeshis, little, you know, colonies of various other countries in and operating as they were back in the motherland. So, right, OK, that's interesting. And so she can only ascribe this to material problems because that's how she thinks. Again, all of this comes down to this distinction, I think. And so I don't think that the dear. freedom to be a Kuma is any kind of freedom at all. Mm -hmm. Academic also, guys, I'm sorry, it's hard to keep up. Has he actually defined what a Kuma is? I actually think that at no point during this convo ever he, has he even come close or even made an effort to define what being a Kuma is. Does he literally just mean, like, looking at porn? Does he mean looking at girls with abs? Wasn't this about girls with abs? When did this become about the metaphysics of being English? <laughs> or Jihad? What, what are we talking about? If we're just talking about, like, jerking off or whatever, I mean, I'm pretty sure Carl is no stranger to the good old horny post himself. I don't know why... I don't know why he'd be barking up that tree. Wait, hold on. Let me not die here. He stunlocked himself in his own fucking video. Well, you know, as somebody who's often stunlocked himself, I can't blame him too hard for that one, can I? <laughs> agent in fact literally an hour ago did a video response that i watched and it, like this was very didn't he post your cock and balls oh true he's literally posted my genitalia on his twitter account before before it got banned again 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 so not only not only has he partaken in the odd kumerism himself he's uh he's he's you know uh yeah pretty gay yes. if i if i do say so myself uh but it's okay i forgive him I forgive him. Can I see? It actually, I, I don't think he posted my nudes, which have been public for a long time, but I think he posted, um, I think he posted a screenshot of me wearing some way too tight joggers that I was streaming with like a year and a half ago, and at one point I stood up and the the fabric was really rode up into my crotch, so like I had just an incredibly evident bulge, like the whole thing, like dick separate from balls, like the whole fucking thing, you know what I mean? That was the first stream of yours that I watched. Yeah, well, I didn't wear the joggers after that because I, I didn't realize, I didn't occur, it didn't occur to me that the fabric would ride up like that, which was stupid, you know? It's, uh, yeah. yeah, that's why Tempest got you those pants. If you're gonna wear tight, like, lower body clothing as a person with a penis on stream, you have to make sure it's black. <laughs> yeah, Vosh moment. Is trying to imply that you're small. Yeah, the funny thing about that is that, again, like, way back when I first started streaming, I mean, like, a couple of months after I started, I post some nudes myself to the Discord, which is, like, ancient shit now, right? And some of those nudes, I was soft and some I was hard, okay? And they took the ones where I was soft, and a lot of the Nazis made edits, so they're like, oh my god, look small penis, because I don't think they know how dicks work, or whatever. Maybe they're, like, maybe they've never, like, looked at their own body in shame, or anything like that. But there are pictures of me erect, it, like, right next to the ones where I'm flaccid. And I've noticed those, uh, those ones never get posted, you know? I have never seen any of those photos posted, even though it was from the exact same group of photos. It's, uh, it's very, it's very interesting, you know? The, uh, the, the selectiveness. It's a grower, not a shower. Oh, I'm totally a grower, yeah, for sure. Why, Vosh? Why what? Why don't they post them? Well, I'm insinuating it's because they it wouldn't prove their point uh, that I have a small penis or whatever. Why did you post them? Oh, because I figured it was near inevitable at some point that somebody uh, that I flirt with would be, like, super shitty and, like, leak nudes of me. So I figured I might as well get ahead of it way in advance and just go, like, yep, there you go. So that in the future, if it ever becomes a spectacle, it's not a big deal. And I ended up being correct, by the way. Because just a few, like, months after I started streaming, there was a person who I was on and off flirting with online who freaked out at some point and posted revenge porn of me on Twitter, saying, there's no way this is Vosh. Vosh is... I'm sorry, guys. You can fucking Pepe mods me if you want. Vosh's dick can't be this big. He looks so good here. He's sending me fake pics. But it was one of the photos that got posted with the original batch, so it was provably mine. So... <laughs> okay, dude. Yeah, sorry. If I have to listen to Sargon for an hour and a half, you have to deal with me. Be interesting because, and I hate to say this, right? I think he's thrashed Adam, Sitch, and Dev on every count, and I don't support yeah, like, Tacoma his wept moment teleology on that, I, like where he wants the government to start, you know, enforcing traditional gender roles and stuff like that. That's not what not what I'm saying at all. In theory and on a moral level, he is right about. Mm -hmm 
not being a slave to one's emotions and again taking it all the way back to this there is nothing how are you being a slave to your emotions for so wait what does this have to do with chicks with abs seriously if your argument is that we shouldn't be like ravenously lustful or whatever then okay that's one argument but the argument here is about whether or not we should be attracted to girls with abs but carl you i've seen you be ravenously lustful towards girls who don't have abs and that's not controlling your 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 desires there your passions so like what does any of this have to do with the thing this started up with there's no relationship thing manly about this character and if the proliferation of unmanly men throughout society is anything to go by all it's going to result in is rampant coomerism and that a good civilization doesn't make because the fundamental crux of his thesis is an unmanly civilization a civilization that doesn't adhere to manly virtues of self-sacrifice courage discipline all the rest uh, is one that's not going to last Remember that this guy apparently said this, like, while in fascist Italy or Nazi Germany. Guys, how long did those societies last? What's that meme I saw on Twitter today? POV, you're Mussolini, and it's a picture of a bunch of guys applauding, except it's upside down. Imagine, imagine being in fascist Italy or Nazi Germany and saying, uh, yeah, Western degeneracy is going to lead to the death and the, the downfall of these Coomer American Jew-run societies. Because he was an anti-Semite, Jew-run societies, you know? And then, like, having to escape desperately and a fucking fragment of a shell hits you in the back of the spine and you're paralyzed for the rest of your life. Imagine, imagine like, wheelchairing away from the burning rubble of Berlin, thinking, like, okay, but America's gonna fall any day now because their men are weak. <laughs> you know? He's, he's like, scooting the wheels as fast as he can. <laughs> at, at least I'm not a degenerate. Oh, God. It's going to collapse. And I think he's probably right, which is why I said, well, he's underselling the total collapse quite significantly. And the thing is, you can see by the left wing response to this, that he must be on something, too, because they, they they're like, oh, yeah, this Kuma meme. We got you now. You're far right. That was not the left response. The left response to that was making fun of you. It's a very nobody was like. We finally have proof that Sargon and this, like, borderline Nazi YouTuber are far right. That was not what people were saying. Nobody is surprised and nobody cares. You're, it's just very funny. The, the reactions I saw on social media were like ubiquitous mockery. Uh, essentially, nobody was surprised or offended. Because you don't think masturbating all day every day is a good thing. You haven't mentioned oh, masturbating oh, at any Nazi. point during this thing. How dare you have some dignity and self-respect not to just be sat there off your face on drugs, just sat on Biden bucks wanking all day. What the oh, fuck you is far he... far right bigot. What the fuck the is he talking like, about? <laughs> Nobody like, said you're this. You're allowed to hold some sort of personal dignity above this. In fact, it's desirable that you do so. The coat. Dude, the co he's he's like he's he's talking about how women with abs will lead to the downfall of civilization. Everyone's laughing at him. He's like, "There's there's nothing wrong with that jerking off every single second of every day." <laughs> you're 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 just mad that I'm saving my cum for a, for for a pure virginal maiden. I don't know. Dude's married, but dude's weird about being married. I don't know good for you it's good for the people around you and it makes sure that society doesn't just collapse in a couple of generations like we're going now and so let's talk about like just how how things are dealt with differently uh in the most left-wing areas of america you can see that oh get look, ready for some base ass shit i've been san francisco i've seen the drug addicts, drug addicts on the streets they're like zombies, unironically like zombies. It's this beautiful, beautiful city, and you've just got this zombie walking towards you. It's like, oh god! Is that the left? You know, it's twenty-eight days later. It started, and you just walk around them, and they're just. Uh, Is that the left? Okay, that was weird, and and so it's just like, in the middle of the streets, just laying there with kids walking by and like well that's an old woman but okay but there are kids walking by you what? know and like what what is this Wait, what? who's in the middle of the streets just laying there with kids walking by and like well that's an old woman but okay but there are kids walking by you know and like what what is this who's who's i thought he said latin old woman i i think he said i'm not an old woman i i, I don't know what he's I, I don't i don't understand i don't get the point okay with this 
Is this how things should be? Is that how things should be? And the, the left are like, no, of course not. Is that what they're no, advocating they for? They should have clean needles. <laughs> like, what? You... Yeah. Stuff like that cuts down addiction. The leftist um, answer to this, which is decommodification and social resources being spent on rehabilitation, is objectively the way to cut down addiction. That's the difference. We actually care about reducing addiction, and Carl just wants to judge the people who suffer to it. That's the main difference there. In other words, we want to act, and Carl wants to virtue signal, which is very feminine of him. Anyone else picking up a feminine vibe from Carl's behavior right now? Um... Yeah, a little bit, a little, a little, a little, a little, uh, a little feminine. Yeah, very submissive, very breedable. Very unfortunate, you know? It's too bad, because after, after this 40-minute video of him complaining about people who thought it was funny that he thinks society is going to die because women like, there were people like women with abs, I was really thinking he was basically like the apex of masculinity, but now I'm starting to question it. Very sad. Are you kidding me? The left's only problem with this is that they don't have safe sites and so this is what they're starting now right why do we provide them safe sites where is it where is it where is it uh, he doesn't he doesn't know god i want to there we go i want to so talk they'll, to they'll have access uh. to trained medical staff sterile supplies and access to overdose reversal medications oh fucking bravo california oh that's that's amazing. Like your your streets are full of drug addicts, and you're like, yeah, God, we need to get them clean needles. Y that's yeah. the problem. Yes. That's, why don't you just give them the fucking? Well, they probably do give them the heroin. But the point that's is, also this is a not thing good, they should. Right? Yes. This is not. They do. They do that. Isn't that something they do in um? Is it Denmark or Norway? When you give them clean drugs, you make sure they're not being cut with anything else. Um, Portugal, Portugal. When you give them clean drugs and make sure they're not cut with anything else, if the drugs aren't cut with anything else, that lowers the risk of overdoses significantly. And it also means um, that the experiences they have are much less likely to send them into states where they're not able to take care of themselves. The cleaner the drug is... Because, guys, drug addicts are going to use the drug anyway. Sargon simping for strong thighs, lol. No way. <laughs> Representation! <laughs> Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. If if she is going to fucking bag on Chun-Li, Anita, we're going to have a problem. You you leave my Chun-Li's thunder thighs alone, bitch. No way! No fucking way! Carl, you stupid idiot! Oh my god! Carl! Carl, Chun-Li is legit like the most muscular chick! She's, like, the most... Mu Everybody know Chun-Li is more muscular than the chick in the fucking picture in the video we're watching. And we all think she's hot, because there's nothing wrong with thinking muscular ladies are hot. You can't cope. It's not just she has wide hips. Those are thick-ass fucking muscle thighs. And you know it, Carl. Oh, my God, Carl. So this is back from 2016, before he was, like, basically, like, white nationalist, you know? So I don't know if his positions on this have changed or anything. Do you think he's purged the sin? I'm in that stream, Lamal. Shoo! <laughs> God damn, Shoo, your history. All right. Yeah, dude, look at look at the size of Chun Li's <clears throat> fucking thighs. Don't, you, don't dude. you start. Don't you fucking start. Honestly, no, I'm just saying. I'm, 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 I'm just saying it is a fucking positive, man. I like it. I'm imagining her crushing my head between those fucking things. Damn, like right. a fucking walnut, okay. is, is she ripping on Chun Li or uh... everything? She's so everybody in yeah. She's just saying all these women have the same body type. But is, that's she, like... is, she, is she saying the cami? Is... They're literally the whole crew is doing the same thing. Her voice changed so much. Yeah, well, you know, different microphone can have a lot of effect on how your voice sounds. Yeah, I I can't believe it. I can't I can't fucking believe it, dude. I love I love you guys. Who fa who found that? Ahsoka Bun O. Can we? Can everyone fucking clappers? Ahsoka Bun O. Okay. Thank you so much for digging up. This very funny bit of history. Round of applause. Oh, that wasn't Shu? Oh, the only reason I said it was because you fuckers in chat said her voice has changed so much. I can't fucking tell. Legit, though, voices do sound really different depending on the microphone. If you took some of my old recordings with Destiny from, like, five or six years ago and weren't told it was me, you probably wouldn't know. Um, so I get that. Chu said that she was on that stream. That doesn't mean that, that th there's not just one woman in the world. <laughs> it could be that's a different woman, but she was also there. I don't know. I don't care.
good at all. And so, okay, well, what's the what's the alternative? And I found this, and this was just... It summarised everything about the problem. Now, look at this picture. This is Afghanistan. Okay. These are people who are working for the Taliban, and the people that they're working on okay. are heroin addicts, which exploded. Apparently, there's 150,000 of them in Kabul alone, okay. according to Vice. And you think, right, okay, well, at least the Taliban are doing something about the opioid what, crisis. What are they doing? Uh, uh, no, 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 that's awful. How could you? According to Vice News, how could you try and rehabilitate these people? As if, look at I me, mean, look at the, look at these drug addicts. Look at them; they look like shit. Oh. They look like their lives have been destroyed by being like the most rampant coomers in the world. This this is a this is this is an extraordinary train of logic. What is this kind of? I I I don't know. I don't know. He's literally just showing a picture of like their heads being shaved, and he's like, "This is good. How is it?" Does it work? Remember when Carl said like five minutes ago that he wants minimal government intervention? Photographs document how Taliban fighters in Kabul rounded up 150 homeless drug users who were stripped, had their heads shaved before being locked in prison-like conditions for the next three months. Damn. Well, it seems like a libertarian, small government, no state intervention Sargon of Akkad solution would be uh, just doing essentially what the most authoritarian regimes in history have done to deal with their social uh, unwanted. Very effective. And does do you think this is going to work, by the way? is that Do you think this is effective? He doesn't care. What he cares about is seeing drug users punished. That's why he's showing a photo of their heads getting shaved and saying, yes, this is good. He did, he, I bet you he's not even going to look into what's being done. He just sees something that looks like them being punished, and that's what he's happy about. A concave mind. Uh, on a drug they can't stop taking themselves. And the Californian angle, the left-wing materialist response, is give them safer drugs so they can coom for longer. This is not what being a human being is about. So they don't overdose and die, and that they have the ability to... I have a video of Sargon simping about a muscular woman. No way. This is not that. Nice try. Jesus Christ, is this from TikTok? Can you get away with showing this much nudity on TikTok? This is borderline YouTube TOS. Nice try, though. And again, we can Coomers fall back in the chat. on our what it is to be manly. This manly. is okay for us to argue from. But I mean, like the, the argument here is purely from the materialistic libertarian it's in the perspective chat, of their civil rights oh i can't believe the taliban are forcing them into these rehabs what about their civil rights that's a good question okay dude okay so that's that's what that's what we're concerned about is it yeah. we're not concerned yeah. about their health about yeah. their happiness about their well-being about their well wait it, we are concerned about their health and happiness that's why we're pro their civil rights his brain is so good he hasn't responded to me, by the way, on Discord, and there's no chance of him actually doing so. It's not going to happen. I'm really, really sorry, guys. We deserve that conversation, but it's not going to happen. Families who might, like, you know, they've probably got parents and brothers and sisters who care about them and who want them helped or something like this. This is not how they're supposed to be, but from the Western materialist lens, you can't argue against it. You have to argue from a metaphysical lens. And so... I like how he's essentially admitting that if you're only taking into account reality and aren't making up metaphysical bullshit that's impossible to prove, then we're objectively right. I do appreciate that concession. Earlier he said that socialists do freedom better than capitalists can, and that's true. And now he's saying that, yeah, if you look at reality, then uh, actually we're beat on that one, lads. We have to appeal to some extra set of definitions we've made up. Uh, so I appreciate that. He's kind of doing like the, the psyop for us, you know? Yeah, base Sargon arc, taking them down from within. Maybe Sargon needs to become like the um, the Jimmy Dore of the right, where he t he destroys their movement by being so aggressively stupid and counterproductive in their advocacy uh, that they end up pushing people over, you know? That'd be really good, I think. This is the summary, I think, of why this whole thing blew up and why fundamentally... 
uh, when you drill down all of the arguments at rock bottom, academic agent isn't wrong. This is not manly, and it's not good to have a, an unmanly civilization. And uh, I don't think it's going to last forever. So you can coom on for as long as you can coom for. Uh, but at the end of the day, when everything that supported your Kuma lifestyle runs out, because the pillars of the earth, the men who are taking responsibility as men for keeping everything running, uh, have gone, and there just aren't any left to patrol the borders, to make sure that the taxes are paid, what the to do the he... dirty jobs that no one wants to do, uh, the whole thing starts collapsing. And, you know, uh, there we go. Your cooming days are over. Shortages go in. Uh, but at least you got to lick a bunch of abs. Real Ayn Rand shit. Well, no, Ayn Rand was was more coherent than this. Um, but by by far, I think. I think Ayn Rand actually had a somewhat consistent, very stupid moral philosophy. Um, but Sargon, I think, is is almost at like in a, an amoebic level of intelligence. You know what I mean? Like if like watching this video, if I were like told this was some kind of creature, I would assume that its greatest ability was being able to like extend its body towards the nearest source of digestible mold. You know what I mean? Like, I would be surprised. Like, if you told me that Carl could rotate his body so he's always facing the sun, I would say, okay, that's, um, yeah, okay. That's about the level I would expect him to be on. Uh, this is a, uh, whole other thing. <laughs> Vosh, academic agent was fired last year from the University of Surrey for posting about throwing a socialist from helicopters and making legal threats against student critics of his online activities. I have an extensive YouTube interaction with him. Wait, no way! So he, he got, he was so much of a fucking alt writer that he got fired from fucking university, and now he's on YouTube? So he was contributing to society and now he's just a YouTube coomer? Ooh. Ooh, where is it all gone? Oh, man. Fuck. If there's, if there's something you can point me to with the interaction, I'd love to see it sometime. I don't want to, like, dig through a trillion screenshots. He thinks it's my fault, lol. What? Did you inform the university that he was being a dipshit? How did that work exactly? I'll go over it later, though, because if this turns into a segment, it's already unimaginably long. It's already stupid long. Only after I learned he was threatening students. Oh, 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 yeah. If you if you find that there's a fucking professor like threatening students and doing like alt right like violence memes threatening shit, fuck yeah. Tell their universities. Tell their universities for fun. You know. Uh, 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 uh just just do it for funsies. You know, have a good time with it. Looks like the right where the attack helicopters all along. True. So true. All right, we have to end this segment. What are there, four seconds left? And if you don't agree, then you're a bad person. True. Uh, the, the, what, he, what he just said, except about, um, except about me and what I believe. Very true. Why do pathetic fucks like Sargon constantly bemoan the myth of disappearing masculinity? Yeah, logical pretzels have said this before, but it's always insecurity. Really alpha masculine dudes? Don't do this. Seriously. Look everywhere. The most confident guys, the most, like, masculine alpha chads out there are just going around fucking and being, like, business dudes or whatever. They're doing their own shit, okay? The people who obsess over this shit are people who are compensating for some perceived internal deficiency, all right? The real chad masculine behavior is ob objectively to leave all this bullshit behind and just try to live a good life where you help people, okay? And I don't think that's a masculine virtue. I think that's a universally good thing. But, like, I think that's a good thing that men should do as well, you know? If you want to be really fucking manly, just li live your life. There's nothing less masculine than looking up to YouTubers to tell you what it means for you to be a man, okay? Just reflect on who you are, what you want to do, and try to integrate your personal desires with the ways in which you can make the world a better place. And do your best to work on both at the same time. That's it. it that's, that's it. That's the whole thing. Congratulations. If you want to do that in a masculine or feminine way, then God fucking speed either way. I do not give a shit. Just have fun with it. And dress well, okay? None of us are freed from the constraints of fashion. We will all look like JoJo characters one day. Alright, I think we did it. Sargon's argument. So true. Yeah, those Norman Rockwell paintings are literally uh, modernity. Kipling, who Sargon referenced, wrote The White Man's Murder. Wait, really? Wait, he actually referenced the person who wrote The White Man's Burden? Nice. 
not far right, but literally every source and individual involved in this is, is like Nazi or Nazi adjacent. Abzar, yes, I'm familiar with, with the original art. And you know what? Here, I don't think Twitch has an issue with this. This should be fine. I'm just going to be honest with you, okay? If you look at this body and you think this is like it's gay to find this attractive if you're a guy, you are such an unimaginable cuck. It's unimaginable to me. If you if you're not into super muscular chicks or whatever, that's cool. That's fine. That's your right, okay? That's totally okay. However, looking at this and thinking, "Damn, that it's gay to be attracted to that. You are you are so unimaginably fucking weak that it it, it it astonishes me. It is so fucking unbelievable to me. I dream of one day being able to fuck like a muscle chick, you know? It's never actually happened. I've fucked muscle guys and not muscle chicks. There just aren't that many muscle chicks, you know?